sets of arms. So you can do up to four poses with the squad leader. Here are some of the poses that you can recreate. And then with the uh, sergeant, we've got this one pose here. Uh, a nice option if, that, if you're looking just to acquire one sand trooper. And these are, again, will be available uh, around January 2014. We're really excited to announce that we'll have uh, exclusive for New York Comic Con later this year. And for our exclusive, it's going to be R2 Q5. Again, we showed him at Celebration, but we were not sure how we were going to distribute it. So we figured at New York Comic Con would be uh, one of the best ways to get it to the fans. Um, the worldwide edition is 3,000 pieces. 1,000 pieces will be available uh, to New York Comic Con attendees. And those 1,000 pieces will have a uh, golden coin. The silver coin will be for the in, uh, international edition of 2,000. And like our uh, previous R2-D2, uh, this piece comes with uh, detachable legs, so you can have them upright or at an inclined position. And there's a close-up of the coin. Again, this will be available first at New York Comic Con, and most likely we'll open up a pre-order through our retail website, uh, kodoos.com. Now, with all the troopers that we've released, um, fans have been asking, when are you going to do Luke, Han Solo, Chewbacca, and Princess Leia? So we're happy to announce here at San Diego Comic Con for the first time that we will be out at offering these four characters in our Artifacts Plus scale. Um, at this time, we've got them scheduled as a two-pack, so we'll have Han and uh, Chewie in one set. We'll have uh, Princess Leia and Luke Skywalker in the second set. And what's really neat about these pieces uh, and artifacts in general is that they have magnets in their feet, so you can reposition them wherever you'd like on the included base. So when you get these two sets together, you'll be able to create a scene like this with all four characters. So, and if um, you've got R2-D2 and C3 Pro, you're going to have a real impressive piece for your collection. Uh, these will be, uh, sh um, we've got uh, a date of 2014 to be, to be determined, excuse me, when these will be available. And now our Bashojo collection, and for those of you who may not be familiar with the term Bashojo, Bashojo means beautiful girl, pretty woman. And uh, our first release for the Bashojo collection for Star Wars was Jaina Solo, and she was extremely popular. We actually did a reproduction of her uh, that we'll be shipping out later this year, so pre-orders are, uh, open, up on our, are open on our website plus on the retailers. Uh, the first uh, man, uh, edition uh, sold out really quickly. So um, we are following up Jaina Solo with Mara J. Now, we showed the uh, artwork uh, uh, earlier this week through our Facebook page, but I'm really pleased to be able, this is the first time that I will be showing an in-progress sculpt. Now, keep in mind, this is an in-progress sculpt of Mara J, who will be shipping out in the first quarter of 2014. So, um, and yeah, looking great. Uh, for the third release, we're, we're still trying to decide who we're going to go with, and maybe you guys can help us out. Um, visit us on Facebook, facebook.com slash kodabukia. You can send us comments, questions, suggestions at kodabus.com, questions at kodabus.com. And if you want to pre-order or order any of these items, you can visit us on our retail website, kodoos.com. Thank you so much, and have a great coming time.
I guess we'll stick to replicas. <laughs> so, as you know, a couple years ago, we started introducing a line, what we call the legend line, where we actually advance um, our replicas to the, what we feel is the next level, where instead of doing any 3D modeling or scanning or any of that sort of thing, we were actually allowed access to the actual prop. We were actually using mold, mold the prop, mold the original mold, or something like that, so it has direct pedigree back to the original prop. So in our presentation today, we're just going to show you three of the items that we have coming at um, that we think are really exciting. The first one is the Dark Mall lightsaber. I don't know if you remember last year we introduced it as a PCR meaning with just one of our stump lightsabers. But after that, we were fortunate enough to actually get hold of the actual lightsaber that Ray Park used in the film. And they allowed us to cast it. So we have now made it into a legend because now it's cast from an original prop. Um, and that'll be up for pre-order probably in the next 30 to 60 days. And if you would like to see the original prop, that will actually be in our booth later today. So if you want to come by and see an actual screen use prop of the Dark Mall lightsaber. Also, Ray Park will be uh, signing the plaque to go along with this. Um, that picture there is actually a picture we took in 2005, so Ray looks a little older now. But, <laughs> but we're really excited about that lightsaber because he is one of the more popular uh, um, characters in the Star Wars universe. The next one is uh, really uh, an exciting um, project for us because the Lucasfilm Archives was gracious enough to actually let us take the original screen used hero, -like, hero um, helmet from Empire Strikes Back and actually cast it to make our version of the helmet. For some of you who purchased the Master Replica ones about seven years ago, that was a digital scan. So this is actually cast from the original prop. And the reason why we ask permission to do that because we know that was done before. That's how they made the stunt helmets for ROTJ where they took the original hero helmet and cast it and made those helmets for ROTJ. Uh, when I was talking to Gino about this, um, he says, I have this really great picture that we could use for marketing for the development. So he emailed to me, I opened it, it was a picture of him. So, <laughs> so we thought we could do better than that, so we actually put together a quick little video here. It's a time-lapse video of the two and a half days that it took to mold the helmet.
So we have a caption from that mold in our rules out. It's not yet yeah, painted, but you can see the prototype of it. And the last thing that we were really excited about was a private donor allowed us access to an original screen used hero armor set. Um, for those who are familiar with the production, at the end of Star Wars, Star Wars in 1977, two suits were sent over to Los Angeles for pickup shots in the San Fernando Valley. This is one of the two. Um, what makes this unique from everything else that's been available in the archives and other, it is a complete suit. From helmet to the boots, the bodysuit, the neck seal, which no one has ever seen before because even the archives doesn't have one of those. Um, and we were able to reproduce the entire costume. It is not, it is a prop replica, so it is prop size. So whoever wore that, if you're not, that's your, the size. <laughs> so, and actually what we've been able to do, well, you know, they do, if you see the red circles, that is that specific armor that, that was used in the film. So, it's an incredible piece. Uh, come down to our booth and take a look at it. I mean, it's hard to describe, and it's best to come in and take a look at it and see the amazing work in, in that suit. Thank you very much. I hope you guys have a great conversation.